So I was just taking a run around Stanford and I had a thought about a question. And the question would be, Joseph, this MOOCLET framework for enhancing personalizing education that was a key part of winning this grand prize in the X Prize competition for how do you transform education through A-B testing? How do you explain what it's, why I would care about it? Like, why would I care about this framework? You know, what is it helping me do? Or what's the point of it? And I would say, well, the MOOCLET framework is basically a, a software architecture that anyone can use. In any app, in any website, even to email or text people, you can use MOOCLET architecture. And so any company can adopt it, any educational technology platform can adopt it if they want to make it easy to enhance and personalize. And I would say that an example of what it does is that you can take components of your digital experience. For example, you could take like the text messages you send people and make the text message a MOOClet. You could take the emails you send people and make it a MOOClet. You could take, you know, on a web page, that explanation right at the top, a MOOClet, or that homework problem right at the bottom, you can make that a MOOClet. And so once you implement that as a MOOClet, using our architecture, you know, with some data structures and APIs on the back end, well, what can you do with that front end component? Well, what you can do is that anyone in the world, if you give them permission, can suggest better versions. For example, you've got a web page, the explanation at the top, um, of here's what a standard deviation is, and then at the bottom, a homework problem. How do you calculate the standard deviation for this setting? You can make each of those a MOOClet, and everyone in the world can say, well, actually, here's an alternative explanation for what a standard deviation is. And then you all can essentially have a competition <laughs> because no one person's explanation is going to work for all students. Some students are going to read my explanation and be hopelessly confused. They're going to read it 10 times and be like, I'm just not getting this. I want to get this problem. You might spend hours on it and just going to give up. And that put that student at risk. They might fail a math or statistics course because the explanations just aren't clicking for them. The MOOClet, making the explanation a MOOClet allows us to add many different explanations from different people. And that's helpful because then students have access to different explanations. So that's a good first step. But even more important than that, it then allows us to A-B testing where we can give students different explanations and analyze data about whether one explanation helps a student who is new to math with students who has lots of experience to understand things, it clicks, and then they're better able to solve the problem at the bottom. Or we can see if one explanation kind of makes it fun. Maybe someone's explanation of standard deviation is a really cool example about how standard deviation matters. You know, you, you tell me, where does standard deviation matter in everyday life? Where does the concept of variability, where is it really important? Well, it can be really important understanding that some of your actions you know, might not work the first time, but they might work the second or the third or the fourth. If you try, for example, a particular elevator pitch to explain what you do to someone, it doesn't work once. Do you stop? Or is it that you have to try it three times or 10 times or 15 times? Because there's a lot of variability in what works. So that explanation might be interesting to some students, might get them excited because they care about elevator pitches. Other students want an explanation standard deviation that's just like laying out the formula. That's what, that's what the MOOClet helps you figure out. Which of these work for students, or what works for the same student in different contexts. What works this week might not work next week, because you have to study it so many times. And the best part of MOOClet is, it doesn't just let you test out A-B tests what's working. It also gives you access to a suite of algorithms that use artificial intelligence and machine learning to discover this for you, to figure out what works for who in what context. It analyzes the data automatically. And even better, it doesn't just do it as a black box. The MOOClet is very flexible, more so than other systems built to date, in that it allows human beings to intervene. So we've built dashboards where instructors can see, as an algorithm is running, what it's doing, and they can step in and say, no, there's something wrong here. That algorithm is optimizing for the wrong thing. I'm gonna shift it over. So that's about human and AI intelligence. Because to build an intelligent piece of software, you cannot use AI alone. That's honestly, it's arguably irresponsible. You have to combine AI with human beings. Human beings have to be in the loop, understanding and interpreting what's happening, and also you need to step in. And it's kind of like anything, right? Teaching is such a hard problem. I don't know why we have teachers do it alone. It's not fair. 
you need collaborative teams of people working. Humans have to collaborate with AI, AI has to collaborate with humans. And not just one human, but groups of them, people with different perspectives. In my teaching, for example, I try my best in everything I do to run it by many other people. I've taught this course four times, but I'm still going to actually keep running it by people because there's always to make an improve or, or do better. And the MOOCLED framework basically makes it easy from a software perspective without you having to program to do these things. And because it's extensible now, in the last year or two, we've actually been plugging in other approaches. So it allows you to plug in generative AI, things like ChatGPT, to generate different versions of what you're going to test out. Or you can actually put MOOCLETs into chatbots. For example, in chatbots, you can, you, you can make the first thing in chatbots says a MOOCLET, or the third thing. And then you can actually A-B test which of the responses the chatbot gives is most helpful to you. So it's a way of actually constantly enhancing and personalizing chatbots. So that was a lot. So what do you all take away from that? What's interesting about that? So I guess the original question here was, what is this MOOCLET framework that helped you all win this competition for transforming education with A-B testing and AI? And I would say that, well, actually, let me give you a second. What would you all say this? What was the key thing you learned from this? What was interesting? What do you want to tell someone about? Let me add a few things, now that you had your time to reflect. <laughs> I would say that what the MOOCLED framework is useful for is providing a software framework that really does like 20 things. It's an architecture that any educational tech platform can plug in. Khan Academy can plug it in. We've plugged into Canvas already. We've put it into edX. Um, you can put it into whatever you're using. Even the email system you're using, right? Gmail, you can plug MOOCLEDs into Gmail and AB tests what emails help students manage stress before an exam. And that's a paper my student published this year at Community Human Interaction, Kai. And what he showed was that it, we had to test like 30 different messages, but we figured out a message that actually tells students, if you um, are stressed before an exam, remember that actually stress can help you perform better. Don't just worry about it distracting you. It can actually improve your performance because it makes you focus, gives you resource and attention. And this on average could boost students' grades by 4%. So for some students, that's going from a B to an A. Other students are going from failing to succeeding. So that's an example of the MOOCLET architecture makes it easy for anyone, teacher, student, parent, scientist, to be able to actually do A-B testing without being programmers. And it allows you to enhance and personalize by allowing communities of people to come together to suggest ideas and then use AI to test out what ones work for who or which one which ideas work in which context and it's now um, because it's extensible anytime a new innovation comes along like generative AI and chat GPT we've actually as of a year ago been plugging it in to generate ideas of chat GPT or improve a chat GPT itself by making what it says a MOOCLED so we can A B test and enhance and personalize what it says on each step. So it's constantly improving. Because here's the thing, you need to make things MOOCLEDs because we have to be more humble. One reason why education has not succeeded, why so many students are still failing, why everyone's not 100%, is because we don't know what we don't know. I teach all the time and I can tell you, I should constantly remind myself, Joseph, there are better ways that you're not aware of. You could be doing this for decades, Joseph, and you're still not doing good enough because students deserve more. So you have to constantly be testing out and improving until the day I die. Until I die, I've got to be constantly improving my classroom. And that's the MOOCLED architecture is built to do.